All right. Hey, everyone. This is Arfan with Grow Automate Scale. And today's video is a little bit different. I normally do tutorials and tips and strategies, but I actually figured out that, you know what, let me get some other experts on here to also share some things that's going to help you with growing your online business, especially as a coach, a, a course creator, a content creator, someone who's building an online business and looking to go from either if you're at the beginning level, if you're already at six figures or trying to scale to seven figures. Um, and uh, I came across Patrick a few years ago. We've uh, done a few projects together and I thought, you know what, this would be a great person to have on for us. I love his personality. And uh, you guys would get an introduction to that. You probably see some musical elements behind you, which uh, he is a musician, which is awesome um, to see the, his creativity, not just be online, but offline too, as well. It's really great to interact with those who are multi-talented. And this is a very multi-talented guy. So what we're going to go to today is going to be the fundamentals of an effective online brand identity. And this is so important, but I don't want to dive into it. I want to give Patrick an opportunity to just go ahead and uh, if you want to mind, Patrick, just introduce yourself, let everyone know who you are and um, just uh, anything you want to share about yourself. Sure. Uh, well, my name is Patrick Sesco. Um, I'm a graphic designer for the past 25 plus years, and I also do uh, brand identity as well. That's kind of transitioned to that over the last, you know, eight to 10 years. Um, just to give you a quick background, I started in print design and I've worked in agencies. I've worked in small design studios and corporate America, and I've done the whole gamut Um and I basically, uh, I'm a corporate dropout, left corporate America in 2005 <laughs> to start my own business uh, because I was just tired of, um, you know, being, just helping big corporations just, you know, fill their coffers when really you didn't feel like there was any kind of purpose in helping real people and seeing people have results and those kinds of things. So um, yeah. that's kind of how I got into what I do now. Man, I love that. That's really awesome. 25 years, right? I'm a uh, five <laughs> years as a business owner in advertising and uh, 25, I can imagine what you've seen and go, which actually brings me to my next question. Could you just uh, kind of give us an idea, like how do you personally define uh, an online brand identity? And also, if you wouldn't mind sharing too, just being in the business for 25 years and doing so much from you know 2005 to even now, uh, just share a little bit about what you've seen the evolution of branding has gone through as in now so much businesses are needing and like an online brand presence is so important. So, but yeah, so define online brand brand identity for us in your words sure. and uh, just share a little bit of uh, just, you know, your insights on how you've seen uh, uh brand just evolve over the, the past 25 or so years. Sure. Um, well, brand identity, I mean, it's, it's a loaded question because, you know, the word brand is kind of the F word in online marketing. It's an <laughs> adjective. It's a verb. It, you know, it means everything. Um, but really the brand identity aspect of branding is kind of the, I define it as the visual toolkit that represents you and your business. And when you're creating a visual brand, you know, you have to use strategic elements that kind of inform what you do on the visual. So it's sort of that visual mm. storytelling. So it's that mm -hmm. visual toolkit that articulates your strategy and represents kind of who you are as a business. Um, oh, I love that visual toolkit that represents your strategy and who you are as an online business. Um, yeah. Business owner. That's, that's you know, just, that's uh, great. And, and as far as like seeing what, you know, the evolution of branding, it's, you know, branding back in the day was you're really for the for the big kids. You know, those were for the big corporations and big businesses because you know they typically cost a lot of money to do strategy and mm -hmm. you know competitive analysis and focus groups and all that stuff. And it was always reserved right. for the big corporations. Um, and what I've seen over the last years, especially with you know the advent of the internet and you know a lot of like online business owners, I've seen really the um, the sort of focusing on personal brands, which are, you know, your, mm -hmm. your face is the face of your business. And I've seen brand identities really come a long way to be actually a lot simpler than they used to be. And that's good in my opinion. Yeah. So I think a lot of brand identities are a lot simpler and it really is an ecosystem. You can't just have a visual brand and expect to have a successful business. You still have to have mm. all of the, the strategic things in place, like your messaging and those kinds of things in order for that brand identity to work. Um, 
I always use uh, Enron as, <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know if, I don't know if you remember Enron. So I I'm sure do. I did a research stuff. paper on them back in the high school days. Yeah. Or a college so, days, I mean, sorry. They had an amazing visual identity, but obviously their values did not align yeah, with their visual align. identity. <laughs> and we all know what happened with Enron. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, the evolution I see is like a lot more uh, accessibility for smaller businesses, um, especially now with the advent of yeah. AI. It's It's crazy what's going on right now. I like that you mentioned that you're seeing that the 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 just the breakthrough of having more personal brands. And the reason why is because you know a lot of us in the online space have you know are seeing like Alex Ramosi and Russell Brunson and some of these bigger guys. And one thing that I was listening to an Alex Ramosi uh interview, and he was talking about like he started focusing just on his personal brand after. Uh, after building up some business and that's what's helped him to scale even more and grow even more is just he has this whole personal brand around him as his own identity right. and whatever business he touches because he's bringing that personal brand to it uh, helps a lot with the success so um, I'm happy you just you mentioned that because uh, just in my own observation I've just been noticing like you know some of the like my own mentor has a huge personal brand and uh, whatever business that he he puts out, the business has a branding on it, but he has this personal brand that just holds a certain reputation and goes with it. And I think that like it just goes so far. And that's something that I'm working on building, and a lot of my peers are working on building. And uh, so I'm, I'm really I'm really glad that you that you mentioned that you know the evolution is going into even in towards that. Um, especially so much of it. So I can't wait to dive in, dive into this with you. If you're watching this or listening to this right now, um, Patrick's going to give us some good stuff. He's giving us stuff based off a of real world experience. This is not theory. This is not something that you want to, um, maybe it's going to help. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's going to help you to stand out more or not, but uh, he's going to give you to actionable and tactical things that you can do right now. Um, and also give you a greater understanding of branding because, uh, like you know, the big F word. No, it's gonna. We're gonna take that to actually see how it applies to business and how it's gonna help you to actually grow your programs, grow your company, and uh, you know, get to that next level. So, um, I wanna I wanna dive in first before we go into that because you mentioned the branding aligning with the, you know you mentioned Enron and the branding not only having to be a good or a really attractive a nice brand but also have a purpose and values. Uh, you mentioned the the visual elements of that. You message you you mentioned the messaging of that, and there's so much to dive into there. So I would love to start off first with just having the brand purpose and values, because I kind of feel for me, before even creating my brand, this is something that I often reference first. Like, what are even my what's the purpose? What's the purpose of growing and scale? Like, what are we doing really? And what are the values I have? And when I sat down with my team, my, my wife is my, uh, she's operating officer in the company. When we sat down together and we really looked at that, we looked at our purpose, like what is our purpose? We don't work with e-commerce brands. We don't work with like apparel or supplement companies, things like that. We work with coaches, health coaches, life coaches, business coaches. Um, those who are in the space that are providing an actual, you know, a course, a tool or a teaching or a program that's helping other people and often cases sometimes saving lives. So we looked at this as, you know, our business is really the purpose behind it is to help create an impact and change the life of others. And I remember the moment when this was like about three years ago and I was running ads and just helping somebody out and it was very business related. Right. But then on one of our check-in calls, this client shared with me, he's like, Oh, I got to share this with you. And just some feedback from one of the persons, he was just like saying that how he was at his end, like he was ready to just kind of throw it all in and, you know, end it all. And uh, he saw the ad and he was like, okay, this is interesting. This is also something I've been thinking about. So he signed up for, and this was a life coaching offer. He signed up for that, attended the free training, joined the program and totally like changed his life around. And it was like, I was like, Whoa, holy, you know, man, I never really even thought of like an ad can have that impact. And along the way, I've had so much examples of clients sharing that just people seeing their ads alone, just knowing that there's people out there that resonates, understand them, um, have, have come a long way and it's set a lot of values also of our business. So I'd love for you to chat about that and just kind of share the, you know, having clear brand purpose and values and how that relates to 
to over, like everything we're talking about here. Yeah, I mean, and you you kind of hit the nail on the head in that, uh, you know, it it, it kind of goes with the messaging because if you want to impact the people that you're meant to impact, then your messaging has to kind of be there. And in order for your messaging to be there and to align with the people that you want to reach, you got to understand what your your values are mm -hmm. and your purpose. And, you know, it's not some big exercise that you do, but it's something that you should journal or something like that, just so that way you really have sort of, a, you know, some people call it the North Star or whatever, but it's just that sort of that guiding principles of your business that allow you to serve the people that you want to serve. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, so let's say, so someone defines that they have a clear brand purpose and clear values. How do they take that to take into the next step now of moving that towards being like when the, the first time someone interacts or comes across or the feel they get, like they have an understanding of the brand's purpose and their values just through their branding. Yeah, well, you know, it like anything in branding, nothing happens overnight. And like I said, it's an ecosystem. So a lot of these components have to work together. Um, mm -hmm. But like, you know, understanding your brand values, you know, so mine, some of mine are like compassion and fun. And so that you kind of want to exude that in your one, your visuals. So if I like if I have a really exciting style of brand, you know, I'm not going to have some corporate -y looking website mm. or logo or anything like that. And but like if I have, um, you, you know, if I'm more like my values are, you know, fun and compassion and those kinds of things. So that's how I show up in anything mm -hmm. I do, whether it's an interview like this or it's my social media content. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's being your true self. And, um, I, I think it's important to exude those values in, in everything that you do. So that way you are attracting kindred spirits, you know, who have those same values. So you I see, like you, you see a lot of people who are faith-based entrepreneurs, so they're going to attract people who are more faith-based and that, you know, that's a much more aligned, you know, partnership as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, you don't want to attract the 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 partiers or whatever. You know, I'm just throwing throwing examples. Yeah, out no, there. I get what exactly saying though, and uh, that's actually that's actually pretty good. I think everyone who's listening to this, I'm, I'm doing it myself too. Just kind of look at my own, look at my values, and look at my the brand I have right now. Because, like for example, if you like, if one of my, if one of the values we have is detail oriented, but I look at my site or I look at someone's site and it doesn't look very detail oriented it's out of alignment already with the brand. Like it right. just can it just totally have an inconsistency there. Cause it's like, right. If, you know, that, that shit. <laughs> like, as, as a sort of a, a opposing view for that, one of my values is like, even though I appreciate grammar and those kinds of things and they're important, I don't focus on a lot of grammar. Like I make a lot of spelling errors and grammar errors and that's just kind of who mm -hmm. I am. I talk, I write like I talk, I make up words and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. But I mean, like you remember back in like the MySpace days where we would make our own thing. And then if you look, it was very busy. It got very busy. Um, if you look at uh, anyways, mine was very busy. It was one of those things that was just kind of very busy. And looking at that, obviously, that was like a little 17, 18 year old <laughs> doing MySpace. But I come across some sites sometimes and I see where it's like it's still very busy and it can be clean and um, and again, just just kind of having that compass of the values and the overall brand values can help to even drive, you know, how does that play out in our entire brand? Um, yeah, and, and, you know, you, those values can also manifest in imagery, like what types of imagery mm -hmm. are you showing? Um, even your graphics, you know, or anything that you're, you have brand patterns or anything like that, or elements of your logo that might tie into those values. Um, there are so many ways to to arrive at a logo or a visual brand and you can use, mm -hmm. you know, personality, your brand values and those kinds of things that will inform the decisions that you make with the visual. So yeah, there's not one straight way to do it. Um, you know, we can get into that when we talk about visual elements, but yeah, it's, it, it's important to just have that, those, the purpose and the values. And it's kind of like I'm everyone I'm sure has heard about Simon Sinek's why, you know, start with why yeah, start maybe with they've why, read yeah. that. But that's, you know, a lot of that comes from that. And when you really understand those things, it really makes, mm -hmm. you know, it really makes the branding side of things a little bit more clear and easier. 
Yeah, so let's let's dive in a little bit to the the visual the visual elements because as 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 you're talking about this, right? Like it's not something we're not only looking at the front visual of what you would see in the office building or a front web page. We're talking about your whole brand as an identity, and even thinking of it as like through the the customer or the the user experience. When someone signs up with me, my brand elements and the visuals are are plastered throughout from even when they have a discovery call or filling out any forms and documents, uh, there's that consistency and in, in branding. So uh, I'd love to just hear, you, you know, what's what like as, you know, from your perspective, from your view, from your 25 years of experience, uh, let's chat about consistent visual elements and what those really should be, especially as we we're talking about like the fundamentals of an effective online brand identity what are the fundamentals of the consistent visual elements that, that we need to have sure um i think i need to preface that with sort of you know the framework that i use when i'm creating visual brands because it's not just hey design me a logo and you design something pretty which you can but there's no strategy behind it um yeah. so i have this framework it's called the brand stack method it's got three stacks if you will uh, one of one, the first one is the foundation. The second one is strategy. And the third one is actual brand identity. And in that foundation, that's where you figure out one, what is it that you do, who you do it for, which is your niche, mm -hmm. how you do it um, and why you do it, your core values and your vision and your mission. So to those sort of fundamental things we talked about. And in the second stack, which is strategy, that's where those things in the foundational stack inform your strategy. So your mm, messaging, okay. your positioning, uh, your brand personality, how you show up, um, your audience personas and those kinds of things. And then lastly, the third stack is the brand identity stack. And what you do in your visuals is informed by what you do in your strategy. So it's sort of this connective thing. That's why I call it the brand stack method. Um, mm. So in the brand identity, now we can talk about those individual components. Um, you know, everybody knows the logo. Everybody who starts a business, like first thing they want to do is like, I need a logo. logo. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Get and, that logo down. <laughs> yeah. And really, I mean, yes, you need a logo, but I think a lot of times people try to get too fancy early on. Um, and when you're dealing with personal brands, the logo isn't as important as it is for say a company uh, brand uh, because you're the face mm -hmm. of your brand. So a lot of, you know, I wear this hat all the time. So that's kind of like a little telltale sign of my personality. I call it my gig hat because I wear it when I play my music gigs. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but uh, so the components of the visual identity, first of all, is your logo. And that's kind of the cornerstone and simple is good. You know, I'm sure you've seen plenty of big names, you know, personal mm -hmm. brands like the Amy Porterfield, their logo is just you know, a nicely typed out name. Um, it should be distinctive if you want it to be you know, uh, differentiated from others. Um, but there's, it's not the only thing that differentiates you. It's the whole ecosystem. And I'll, I'll keep mm -hmm. saying that. Um, then of course you have, <laughs> excuse me, your color palettes, um, you know, colors can evoke emotions and convey messages. So choosing that right color, um, family, if you will, and whether it's a bright color or where, whether it's a muted color can have a, a large effect on how people perceive your brand. So that's where the strategy comes in really, that's where it's really important. So your, mm -hmm. your core values and your personality can really inform what you do with your color palette. Um, and then of course there's typography and similar to colors, typography can, it's sort of like the, it communicates your brand voice and your personality as well because type has shape and personality to it as well. Um, and then uh, another and that's, thing- that's, And that's the, the fonts for some of those who are- Right, right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Typography is sort of just the implementation of fonts in, in your brand. Um, sorry, I always forget that I have to kind of remember not to use too much industry jargon. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. I was like, wait, typography, man, that's, I started thinking of calligraphy in my mind. It's just like it's an association of calligraphy and typography. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I so didn't think about uh, that. But yeah, like fonts. Um, yeah. You know, fonts have their own personality and some fonts are very readable and some are not. Some have... Mm -hmm movement and some have you know pizzazz to them so depending on yeah. what your brand personality is 
I want to um, interject a little bit, a little bit here before you sure. get too far further along the way, right? And from a as an ads manager, um, well, as an agency owner, I say ads manager, but as someone who helps companies run their ads and has helped with behind the scenes of uh, a bunch of seven figure, six figure launches uh, of of coaches who are you know using these strategies for brands. Um, one thing I've noticed the fonts is actually a, a key component to actually having increased conversion rates. And what I mean by this is that often we see some of those fancy cursive fonts, which when there's big broad letters on top of like a website on a desktop, it looks awesome. Now, when you start moving this through and we're looking at this on a Facebook newsfeed or through a story or through a mobile, it's very difficult and hard to read. And what I've seen is that when we create ads and if it's too cursive like it's too much of a cursive font and you can't really at the first quick glance make out what it is or go to a landing page and the headline is very hard to read, these mm -hmm. automatically give us a lower conversion rate. So often like looking at and just kind of what, what, what Patrick's talking about here, having, you know, having your, your logo, your colors and your font. I just know from firsthand experience, fonts is like, a really key component and also having really good conversion rate. So when we're running an ad to a landing page, we want to get above a 20, 25% conversion rate and we want to do everything we can because we're running paid traffic. So we want to maximize a squeeze out of every dollar and every penny. And this is something when you're thinking about your, your, um, you know, your brand and something I never thought about because I wasn't when beginning, I wasn't thinking about, running ads and spending thousands behind ads or anything like that. But uh, now after doing it, it's like, wait a minute, if I knew this before, when I first selected my fonts and things like that, we just kind of have that perspective of like, hey, how is this going to look when on a headline on a page or something like that? Because I would have, I've, I've, I've personally changed my font for my business about three times. <laughs> and part of those reasons is that like after a while, it looked, it's like, yeah, hey, this is kind of difficult to read. It's not really clear. And it, it doesn't, you know, the, the the image I want to give for the brand doesn't even impact that. So I just want to interject there. Of course, I want to toss it back over to the continue what you were saying. Of course, and and I'll I'll even expand upon that a little bit because you bring up a good point. And people often think fonts have because you you know they're representing personality. They have to be crazy decorative fonts. Now, mm -hmm. um, when I do brands, when I create brands, I I incorporate fonts. You know, no more than three fonts total because too many fonts can be very confusing and and convoluted. Mm -hmm. But um, font. your the primary purpose of your fonts is to have your message to be readable. You can't if you have this really cool script font like you were saying, mm -hmm. and you you know you have your message in in written in that font whether it's a headline or not, and you can't read it. People are making literally millisecond split decisions and judging you and your business based on. Mm lots of things whether it's oh it looks professional or one can i even read it if i can't read it or if i have to do this and make it out it's like i'm out of there you know yeah um so it, it's a good reminder that um branding and design can have an roi um it's really hard to like pinpoint and get metrics uh yeah. that's that's a question that i get a lot well what's the roi it's like it's so many things that happen at once it's yeah, really hard to pinpoint factors, that yeah Mm -hmm. But that's a perfect example of that um, in terms of readability and having an ad become successful versus not. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I was actually interested when you mentioned the ROI. Uh, like there are companies that pay, you know, quite a bit of money to do certain things that it's they're not even able to track an ROI. I was talking to a client of mine who um, has two businesses, a local and online, and the local business, they do videography. And he was saying, he was like, it's just so fascinating because all of the online stuff we do, we're able to track it. I can tell him seven days you've made this amount of money, and we right. can look on the back end, say thirty Lots days. Of data. You know, this yeah. is this is what you have. And he was just like, he's like, some of these um, big businesses out there will spend thirty to one hundred fifty k on uh, you know a commercial that there's no way to even get any of this data, but they'll spend it. You know, and like we're we're able to see this clear data on the on the back end. Yeah. It's like it's just so amazing what using the right tools and you know being able to actually build a business by doing some things that move the needle can can make a difference versus just shooting something just because you need a commercial you need to be aware you know to build right. awareness so um yeah it can go a far away you know one one thing is actually interesting when it comes to advertising 
one thing we can do is literally change like colors. Like we will change the color of the buttons and we'll be able to see the difference in the conversion rate it was like, if we're at 35%, we had a yellow button, we changed it to green. Now all of a sudden it's a 45%. Like we can see a tangible ROI increase in there. So it's really, really cool to, 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 to know that the, the visual elements of a brand can, uh, can bring an ROI something I, no one's ever brought that up before. No one's ever mentioned that. So I'm really happy you, you mentioned that because it's, it's true. You can't get an ROI from your branding. Right. And, and, and there's sort of the, um, the intangible ROI of confidence and, and those kinds of things too. And that's kind mm. of what I sell. I sell confidence mm -hmm. because so many times people are just like, oh, my brand sucks, or they try to copy yeah. somebody else's brand. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I don't want to put myself out there. So, you know, the part yeah. of the ROI is having that confidence. Um, and, and, and that goes, that goes, I think that goes a long way because I, I, I could tell from like sales and things like that. If you're not confident, like the, when doing high ticket programs, a lot of, a lot of the sale comes down to confidence. Do, like, does the person believe in their own program? Are right. they confident in it? And the branding around it goes a far away. Cause does it, does it show off? Does it appear as something that not only is a visually appealing to others, but also just even to us, are we proud of it? Is, does it feel like something that I'm going to say, Hey, I, you know, I'm confident in selling this offer for, 10, 15, 20,000 dollars or four or five thousand. The no, everyone's high ticket is two thousand above. So anything over two thousand, like do we feel confident selling it? And just just before we even before we even have a conversation with someone, the feeling, the feeling that we get from the the brand visuals that's created, that goes a far away. And I know that's for me. Like if, if I'm putting out something and I love the way it looks, I love the way it feels, I'm my confidence in selling it just goes up so much even so much even higher. Yeah. And another way to look at that as sort of an analogy is like, think about, you know, if you have a nice Armani suit that you wear to a, a job interview, you know, you just, mm -hmm. you feel like a million bucks and the, that confidence soars. Um, so that's kind of your brand is kind of like the Armani suit because people are judging you based on first impressions and, mm -hmm. you know, True. people, people have to be exposed to your brand at least, you know, 10 times before they even start to remember it which is why yeah. the consistency side of things is so important. And I know we're kind of jumping all over the place here, but it, it, felt, it fit perfectly yeah. into that. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. It's just, you know, we're, we're really talking about that visual elements. And, and again, um, Patrick, you left off, you, you covered logo, you co you covered color, you covered fonts. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other elements, the consistent well, visual elements that you want to, to cover there. Yeah. There was just one more and this is sort of like a catch all and it's, it's imagery and your graphics. Um, okay. so these are other things that you can further articulate certain things in your strategy, whether it's illustrations, whether it's your type of photography, whether it's your brand photography, you know, what are you doing in your photos? Are mm -hmm. you kind of drinking the coffee, reading a book at a coffee shop or do you have your guitar in the background? So all these mm -hmm. little things. And, you know, I'll, right now my my desk behind me is a little bit of a mess, but usually I have some trinkets. Like I have a, like that little thing there. It's a drawing mannequin because, you know, I'm an artist. So it's like, I do all those things. So just those little things that you incorporate into your, mm -hmm. your visual brand um, make a big difference. So that's something important to think about when you're creating yeah. Visual side of things. No, I want to talk about some of this really quick because we ran a we're running a program for one of our clients who's a um a registered dietitian, and uh, she sells a program for for you know helping with weight loss, right? Like uh, so many people. Um, but one of the things that's interesting is her spin is that you can really if you follow her program, you could have and still enjoy things. So one of the graphics we use, she had a branding image of her and a few friends having um some drinks at a bar. And when we use that graphic, her conversion rate just increased so much. Oh. Because think <laughs> about it, right? That's one of the big things people feel guilty over is that they know that when they drink, if someone has five or six beers, the next day you're bloated. There's no no way around it. Like you, the next day you feel like, oh, I, you know, I packed on a few pounds or I'm a little squishy around the midsection. Right. Um, possibly even worse for women, but I'm not going to get into that. But so <laughs> the whole thing, again, so having that imagery, it's totally on brand to the messaging that is going on that she should put in. That's her personality. She likes to have fun. She works out, exercises, and she goes and has, hangs out with friends. So it made a big difference in just increasing the conversion and attracting more of that good client. Because now this is people resonate with that of working and, you know, going to hang out with a few friends and getting a few drinks. 
And to do it without feeling the guilt or without feeling like, hey, I can't do this. I have to deprive myself because it's going to put me back to my goal. Like taking that away is already more attractive. So um, when you mentioned that, it just came to my mind and I wanted to share that. So anyone else out there that's, you know, potentially doing something similar and they're wondering about their graphics, like thinking of that, like what's going to attract your ideal client? Like what imagery is going to attract them from when, the, from when they first when they first see that? Yeah. And, and to expand on that a little bit and to talk about what we brought up a little bit earlier about personal brands is that another thing that I'm seeing more of and have been seeing more of for the past five years is people really letting people into their personal lives mm -hmm. more than just business. It used to be just business. And now it's like there's a, the lines are blurred between your personal life and your business life. Um, and, and that's, that makes sense for like online business owners, because that's what we do. Yeah. Like, that is our lives. <laughs> yeah. What's that Jay-Z quote or what he says? I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. He just, like, oh, no, I don't says, know like, that he one. just, he just looks at his whole life as a business. So it's like, it's, that's interesting. It's, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> Very successful business. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so um, that's awesome. So that's really cool. And just, you know, the very importance of maintaining that consistency, across all touch points website social media the marketing materials the client experience when even when they onboard as a client and even when they offboard as a client that they still get that consistency in the brand the branding uh, visual uh, or the consistency in the branding uh, visual elements is there anything you want to add to that Patrick I just want to say that like talking about consistent consistency is never underestimate what a little thing can a little thing can go a long way. So never underestimate. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, I'm talking about how you sign off on your emails, you know, um, mm. what, what your email header graphics look like. If you have, if you're just doing, if you're not doing text emails and you have like a newsletter ish with graphics in it, just what that looks like, it's a small thing. And you might just sort of, Oh, it's just a little email header. All those little things have, mm -hmm. can have a big impact because Remember, you're seeing your brand day in and day out. You get sick of it. You're going to get sick of your own brand. And I say, if you mm. do get sick of your own brand, that means you're doing it right because you're consistent with it. Your audience isn't seeing it day in and day out. They're seeing it here. Yeah. They're seeing it in your feed. They're seeing it in the email. So when it's consistent, there's that correlation that they have. And it's all subconscious, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why those little things that you can do to elevate your brand can make a long, make a difference. And again, it's over time. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. What, you know, but what, what I hear Patrick telling you guys, or what I hear him saying is that there is like all of this, there is a lot of uh, psych psychology that goes behind it in terms of being able to put together this, um, you know, your, your, your brand stack, I believe is the, the brand yeah. stack method, right. To hold the full yep. brand stack. Like there's a, there's a good amount of, the strategy portion of psychology. And that's something I learned a long time ago is actually like um, the color that you have can actually like, I think and you correct me if this, there's a, this, this, but I believe like the color blue is associated with loyalty and trust. Correct. So yeah. having blue as part of a brand elements like that. Also in like an actual living area, painting the walls a light blue helps to induce relaxation and peace. So it's like the like these colors have associations to feelings and things like that. People will come across when they come to your brand, um, like because you could tell, you could see something. This is a very aggressive brand. This is a calm and laid back brand. And you could look at everything. Look at MMA brands or like martial arts brands, right? And then look at spa brands, right? You could see the drastic difference between the color scheme and the feeling. You wouldn't take a lotus flower and put it over on an MMA. It doesn't make <laughs> sense. It's like yes. it's kind of, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna meditate. And whoever stops. First loses. That's a, <laughs> that's a, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's really interesting that you'll, you know, whoever's watching, I'm guaranteed you're going to start going around, you're going to start noticing brand stuff that you didn't even think about before just because of this conversation. It's, it's going to be awesome. So that's true. Um, I can't tell you how many times we analyze menus and things like that at, at restaurants <laughs> when we go out. <laughs> Before we before we hop into um, compelling brand messaging, the messaging behind the brand, things like that, that we should talk to, I wanted you to just uh, take a quick minute and just discuss what you've noticed in your experience as far as when when you have this full brand stack method established, what is the impact on trust and credibility for the brand? 
It's it's huge. Um, again, it's re it's very difficult to. I can't I can't sit there and tell you that. Oh yeah, well this client had a you know an increase in you know sales this quarter because of the mm -hmm. brand stack. Um, because a lot of that is internal work. It's a lot of internal work that gives you more confidence. And mm -hmm. when you have more confidence, you show up differently in your business. Very um, true. You know and. It, so it's really difficult to give a true value ROI on those kinds of things. I mean, unless you're like a Pepsi or a Coke or something like that, where, you know, they have, they have millions of dollars that they spend on all these, you know, research mm -hmm. you know, and analytics and those kinds of things. But for smaller scale businesses, it's, it's, it's a lot more difficult. And because there are so many things that have to work in concert, like your messaging, your copywriting, um, especially for ads, you know, copywriting is super important because you only have, yeah. you know, a little piece of real estate to yeah. work with. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so you can change one word and have an increase in, in, in conversions, you know? So mm -hmm. there's so many things that, that apply or that, that make a difference in the brand. So the visual is one thing. So like Enron, you can have the best brand, but if you're not, if your strategy is not matching up or in alignment with that, it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. then you're not going to be successful in that way. Yeah. And that's awesome. And I think for one thing that I look at when I start working with some new clients is I look at their net presence as far as like, what, what do they appear? Cause again, a cold lead coming into someone who doesn't know, they don't know you at all. They're just starting to get to know you. They're going to look at you. Like, what do you appear like? Do you appear as a professional? Do you appear as someone who can actually provide the service and offer and the help that you're claiming? And that just a, just a look of the brand alone as someone goes between your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your website, things like that can really make a big difference in, in uh, just overall conversions. I have a client recently just sent me a boxer and she was like, Hey, someone booked a call. But she never signed up on my email list. I'm trying to figure out she came from an ad, where she came from. And talking to the person on the call, she saw an ad. She was kind of curious about the person. She was like, hmm. But she, she, so she clicked on her business, her, in her uh, Instagram handle, went to her Instagram, liked what she saw. There was a lot of content, engagement. Ended up clicking the link um, inside the profile going to her website, loving the website, was resonating, and booking a call, scheduling a call, uh, a console call to just work with her in her program. And a lot of that had to just do with, well, there was a brand element. There was a consistency between the ad to the Instagram, from the Instagram to the actual booking calendar. So it like that trust was established in just a few clicks. And right. I think like there's a there's an importance of knowing that these billion dollar companies are spending a lot of money on their branding. Well, they did the work for us. We can just know that, Hey, this is important. We don't have to spend the money behind it. Right. Like right. Following, following the things that Patrick is telling us right now. Uh, we know that we're going to get an increase in our conversions. We're going to get that confidence needed to sell our product, our products even easier. And we're going to look, we're going to love the way we look. Um, um, I, I think I'm not to take that from a, um, a men's warehouse commercial. I was going to say, it's like men's that. warehouse. But, <laughs> but we're actually going to literally love, like you, you mentioned that you were going to get sick of our brand. And honestly, I'm not sick of my brand. I love my brand. I think it's really cool. And it reminds me of the mission that I have behind it. So it's one of those things where I see it all the time. It's all over. It's on clothing. It's on um, my Slack channel or emails. I see it like a dozen times every hour, but it's just like, I, I actually still love it. I'm not getting tired of it. So maybe I'm not putting it out enough. And uh, no, no, that, 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 no, you make a good point. Like if you feel good about it, that's great. But I, I, I guess I meant to say that people always have the tendency to want to change things up because it's like, Oh, it, they just want something different. You know, they feel like they need to change it up. Whereas if you're consistent with it, that's what you really need to do because it's everywhere, yeah. you know, you don't want it to be piecemeal looking like this and looking like that over here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I'm going to start transitioning here now. Just I know Patrick has one more thing super important he wants to talk to us about. And then I want to give you all an opportunity to be able to connect with Patrick if you're looking to um, get some support from a brand strategist or even. Uh, I'll have Patrick talk about that, some ways that you can uh, interact with him and even follow him because he gives some consistent content on social media. 
Um, anyways, before I get into that though, uh, Patrick did say he had some things, some points he wanted to share just on on uh on having a comp a compelling brand messaging. So I'm gonna turn that over to you, Patrick. Yeah, and that's probably one of the most difficult things to nail down, and you probably know that too, as you yeah. know, as an ad strategist, in that you know your messaging. Like, I how many times have you said? If your funnel's not working, it's probably your brand messaging, you know? <laughs> I preach that. That's, a, that's half of my content probably has that messaging. Yeah. And and it's it's funny because that's brand messaging in and of itself. But it, it's so brand messaging for me is probably one of the hardest to articulate um, because you can have brand messaging, you can have product messaging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, messaging is basically, you know, your brand's voice and your tone and the way mm -hmm. it communicates with the audience um, and it, it conveys your, I hate using this term unique value proposition, but it, it basically, it conveys that I got you. to your audience. So that way they know, okay, this guy knows me, this guy knows what my problems are and this guy knows how to solve them. So ideally, if your if your copy your content, your brand messaging can sort of talk to understanding where they are, what their pain points are understanding um that you can fix it for them so that's kind of mm -hmm. what brand messaging is and i it's so hard to to articulate what it is and i struggle with my own personal brand messaging i'm good at doing it for other people but when i do mm -hmm. it for myself you know i'm a little bit more um uh, i'm harder on myself yeah i know what you mean it's like when something's too close to your face it's hard to really focus and see it yeah versus um when you when you're doing it with someone else you have that eagle's eye view analyzing from afar it's the same way with me too as well like writing my own ad copy sometimes i'm like okay i need i need help with this because i'm just so close to it i'm going to keep doing the same hooks and angles and i need some different hooks and things like that so uh it's really, that's really that's a really good point and you know brand messaging can also go back to oh, excuse me um your values and, and and those uh strategic things because you know, I always say like, hey, if you're tired of your brand, you're doing it right. That's that's brand messaging. You know, mm -hmm. I also talk about um, I was tired of being a cog in a corporate, you know, a corporate cog in a wheel there in, in corporate America and not having mm -hmm. the impact on on smaller business and actually making a difference in people's lives. That's brand messaging because that's telling me what my values or is telling them what my values are and wanting to help people and to yeah. who are the people that I want to help smaller businesses who don't have the big budgets like the corporation. So um, it's really, it's, it's, it's tough to nail down your brand messaging um, and you can have multiple messages that kind of work mm -hmm. together to sort of articulate that strategy and your foundational values and those things. Okay. So if someone was just thinking like, okay, uh, it's difficult to articulate is you know, this is something that potentially uh for us this has a lot to do with testing like we're not sold or you know in love with just one messaging uh we right. want to see what the audience is going to resonate with so we test different things um where would you say to start like someone is newly developing a brand they're like okay i i, I work on developing the brand i've been in a business i've gotten a few clients but i, I don't actually have a um you know, I actually don't have an to start, actual thing thing. Yeah. yeah, I would say to start really um, is understand your your purpose. So you know what what it is, why you want to do it. You know, why why are you doing what you're doing, of course, um, those foundational values. And then if you're just starting out, I think it's best to kind of put that in, in an elevator pitch type of thing, just saying who you help how you help them, why you help them. And mm -hmm. that'll give you a little bit of clarity. And then you can start thinking about, and this is where storytelling and branding comes in. You start thinking about your own personal story. Like my personal story is I was in corporate America. I hated it. I was working 12 hours a day. I was not mm -hmm. watching my kids grow up. And I was just tired of being, you know, filling up corporate coffers. So that was, that yeah. was sort of my why, you know, so like I wanted to be with my family more off more. I wanted to not, you know, make, I wanted to have a difference in people's lives um, rather than just kind of go work for the man, if you will. <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly. Those are some of my reasons too, as well, for wanting to get out of corporate, like literally yeah. exact same things. It was just so much. So yeah, I really and like so that. You, you, you tie those things into just your, your content and that becomes messaging. So messaging isn't just a sentence. 
-hmm. It's sort of the underlying themes that you sort of discuss that show people you're the right person for them. And, yeah. you know, you're not going to be right for everybody. And that's what you know, messaging is a good in that it's going to repel people that you don't want mm. to work with. I got you. So basically what I would say is, which is to kind of summarize that is to look at your, look at the brand purpose, the clear brand purpose that was developed by, um, that you have, you know, whether you journaled about it or just kind of thought about it for a little bit or going, went on a walk and it came to you, whatever that case is. And then from there, look at creating that, um, Elevator pitch that I help mission statement, so to say. So it's like I help so and so, so they can achieve desired results, so to right, say. Right, right. And just fill in their blank, and then from from there, like start putting that out. But again, that can change. It's just, it's just it's more about the underlying, the overall feel of it, and it could be it could be multiple different messages like that. Um, but for starters, that's a great place to start off. Look at the brand purpose, create that statement, and let that be a little bit of a um, a guiding light, so to say, towards the overall messaging of the brand that's going out. And it's okay if that has to change. Or uh, yeah, messaging will change response. more often yeah. than not. Mm -hmm. And you know, and just to add to that, um, shoot, I just had a thought and it just escaped my mind. I hate it when that oh, happens. <laughs> catch it. That's why we wear um, hats. <laughs> yeah, if it comes if it comes back, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll circle back around. If I something I said. Um, okay, awesome. So uh man, I appreciate you spending the time today giving us this this tips. Like these are these are foundational, you know, of having an effective online brand identity. I want you guys all to realize that some of these things that Patrick mentioned can sound like oh, logo, colors, fonts, but it's the little things that play a big role, especially when we talk about our brands and the consistency of it is going to help because again, people need to see you at least 10 times to even think about even liking you and wanting to trust you or even making a purchase from you. So if every single time they see you, you look and appear different because there's an inconsistency in the logo, inconsistency in the color, and you go from a soft palette to a hard palette, and then you go from a spa to MMA and they're like, well, which, which one are you? Um, <laughs> what are we going to be doing here? So we want to have that consistency across the board and it's going to really play a big, a big, um, a big difference. So, uh, Patrick has a little bit of a gift to kind of help you all get, get started on that, or at least, uh, know where to go because it's, it's a journey, um, to, to having the entire brand stack fully fleshed out. It takes, it does take time, but, um, can you tell us about what you got for us, uh, Patrick and, I will make sure I put a link um, below in the description and things like that so everyone can grab it. Sure. Um, I have a, it's, I call it the, the brand roadmap, the 4D brand roadmap, where you have your discovery, your development, your delivery. Um, and those are the things that everything is basically listed out and what goes into building a brand. So some of it's a marketing side of things. And some mm. of it's the strategic side of things. So um, you can go ahead and grab that at Patrick, www.patricksesco.com forward slash brand roadmap. And uh, that's just give you the foundation of all those aspects of building a visual brand. Gotcha. That's awesome. I'm going to put a link below. It is www.patricksesco.com slash brand roadmap. And Sesco is spelled S-E-S-K-O. Um right. But I'm gonna have a link in the description so you guys can grab that. I think it's really awesome. It's actually a really awesome um, guide, so to say, to get. And this is specifically created for online entrepreneurs like yourself, for course creators, those who are really looking to really create a a million dollar looking brand. Not only looking, but also tangible in your bank account to where you're gonna get that. There's yeah. the process to getting that is does in, does include having a really brand that stands out. And I was at a conference uh, recently, and uh, we had a panel speaker, and these are all seven figure online entrepreneurs. And one thing really stood out to me recently this past uh, week was actually on Tuesday, this, a few days ago. And he mentioned that one thing that got him past the plateau of being at 35k a month to getting to 85k a month was really focusing on his brand they already had a brand but the positioning of the brand the look and the appearance of the brand it it needed to really hone in on who they were really helping and once they took it took about three months to focus on this and in during that process when they locked in a little bit more in their visual elements their purpose their values and um they didn't say this explicitly i'm using these these are patrick words but in their description, I see how all this makes sense. 
because it really yeah. lined up there. When they really locked in all these three things that we just covered today, uh, it allowed them to now have that even increased focus on who they're serving, their mission. Not only that, but the team around them had an increased focus on the mission and they were able to just drastically scale their business over the next six to 12 months doing that. So it's something where if you're thinking about your business, if you're at a, if you're at a certain level, you feel like you're plateauing out, take a look at your brand. Look at it. Is it really, is it the most effective as it could be for helping that deal client that you're looking at that, um, to to help. And if you think it's not, if you think that there's opportunities there to really position yourself even more, I have someone who you can uh, talk to and speak with by getting some help. So um, Patrick, let us know what would be a great way other than the roadmap if someone wants to get in contact with you to say, hey, you know, how can you work? How can we work together? They want to up-level their brand. They really want to take someone who has the experience and the know-how to help them to have, you know, apply the brand stack method and to take them to the next level. How can they get a hold of you? What does that process look like? Sure. Uh, I mean, I can even do two ways. On my website, there's a contact form, uh, www.patricksesco.com, uh, and then just click on the contact and that'll pop up. Um, and Or if you want to email me at patrick at patricksesco.com, um, nice. I'm happy to do that. And you can just say that you've heard this episode um, and then I'm happy to, you know, chat. We can do a Zoom call, no obligation. You know, I, I like to help. I like to talk to people. I like to meet people. That's where I get my energy from. I'm more of an extrovert. So, yeah, um, nice. so yeah, so that's, that's how you can get a hold of me. Awesome. Very cool. And so, of course, all the socials, you know. <laughs> yeah. What's your social handle, by the way? Um, That's a good question. Um, I, I am Sesco. primarily on Facebook. It's just Patrick Sesco, Branding for Online Entrepreneurs. Um, and then I'm also on LinkedIn as Patrick Sesco. All right. Very cool. I'll make sure I drop some links down there so you can get in contact with Patrick around this. He's, he's awesome. His I've seen some of the brands he created. Uh, he created brands for some of the clients that I work with. Um, I looked at his site. I didn't even know it until I looked at his site and I was like, Oh snap. It's one <laughs> of my clients. So, uh, <laughs> so, and I always love their, their brand. So it's really happy coincidence that this happened. So, um, there you have it. Uh, get the brand roadmap from Patrick. Uh, if you're looking to you know, really take this next level, you're like, hey, you just want to get an expert. You're too close to look at it yourself. It's too blurry, so close up. And you need someone to, to help you to really take that eagle's eye view. Not only that, but take you know over 25 years of experience on this to, to help you to craft something that is a world-class brand identity that's going to up-level your current business to where you are right now or even get you started off on the right footing so that way you're, you feel confident in your branding and it just makes you that much more confident in your sales, um, visit Patrick, patrickcesco.com and just get in contact with him. Uh, he's offering you a free uh, free call just to discuss what, you know, what you're looking to do and see if it's a good fit, fit, fit or not. And um, I, I promise you, Patrick's a great guy. It's one of those things. I've known him for a few years now and I wouldn't have him on here if I didn't think so. So world-class uh, person here, very fun person. So, and if you need some help with your branding, I I, I would trust you in Patrick's hands. So uh, Patrick, before we wrap up, is there any final thoughts that you want to, that you want to share with the community? Um, you know, just be yourself and have fun with your branding. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be so suit and tie buttoned up. Uh, it, you know, like experiment with it and, uh, you know, you'll be really surprised at what, what can come out of it. Awesome. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for your time today, your insights and just uh, the additional conversations we had um, that was outside of the, the actual topic. I appreciate you having here today. And uh, for those of you who, uh, if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, um, drop some comments below too as well. Let us know what questions you have. We'll be happy to answer those in the comments. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful and we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.